Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, I'm Lori Baker with Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. Today we have Mary Kate Carpetris, and we're going to be talking about quilting with flannel. Mary Kate, you just recently made a, a quilt using flannel, and I'd like to talk about some of the ways you dealt with the challenges of flannel. It's not even just flannel, but um, it came from particular sources. So as a lot of new parents know, it's not uncommon to get a lot of receiving blankets, flannel receiving blankets. Um, and you're going to use those a lot for the first few months, but then not so much. Not so much. Well, if you're a quilter, they're no longer receiving blankets. They are pieces of fabric. Yes. <laughs> they just happen to have surged or maybe hemmed edges. But other than that, you have a really nice piece of fabric. So I had a number of receiving blankets now that my younger daughter is a toddler. We don't use them anymore. I thought, I want to try to see what I can make out of these. So I made this quilt that's here on our, on our design wall as sort of an exercise. Um, I took a block called Whirling Square. I made it much larger. That takes up the bulk of the quilt aside, right. from, those, aside from the side borders, the outer borders. And um, I was just curious as to what it would be like to work with receiving blankets. Um, and um, I, I discovered a few variants, variables there. Yes. Um, receiving blankets can come to you from a variety of sources. I think, so here are some more that I have in my, um, that I've had. Um, these top two, I think, were even hand-me-downs. Um, they're useful, but they're, uh, you know, they're a little used. They're a little nubby feeling. I don't, right. I don't know if I'd want, and I think there's, you know, a couple of stains. I don't know if I want to use them in a quilt. They feel a little thicker than the blue ones don't on the they? bottom yeah. too. And they've been washed a lot. Right. So I don't think I'm going to use these for quilting, but maybe like um, batting for yes. a doll quilt or something. So I'm not getting rid of these. I'm keeping these. Um, then this set is really nice. Um, and again, but they come from a variety of manufacturers. A they come in a variety of weights, a variety of weaves. Yes. A variety of qualities. Um, they maybe are washed a different number of times, depending on which one's your favorite. Right. So you just want to keep those in mind. So when, if you decide to use receiving blankets in particular, but I think flannel in general, starch is your friend. Yes. Starch is your friend. Um, and I learned that. So here's one that I um, starched a portion of so you can you can see that you can feel it and I think you can even see it. Yes. So this is the portion that I starched. You can certainly feel yes. how, it, um, how, that, how stiff that feels, and I think you can see it, versus what the unstarched portion looks and feels like. So you use significant quantity of starch. I starched, and then I starched one more. <laughs> I think starch more than you think you need. Uh -huh. It's not going to hurt. It's going to wash out. Right. And it will just help control things. It will help keep things under control. Um, so what I did is I wanted to use a, a variety of the receiving blankets that I had. So I cut strips, I cut two and a half inch strips, and I created fabric, if you will, a, kind of a, 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 a panel. The edges were all different lengths and right. kind of ragged, again, coming from different portions of it. But from that, I cut the squares that I needed in order to make the half square triangle units that are in the quilt. Okay. So I didn't cut triangles for those strip pieced portions. I cut squares okay. and I pieced half square triangle units using the general method of drawing a line on the diagonal and stitching the squares together on either side of the line, right. cutting and flipping open. However, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, the name of the block is Whirling Square. And I wanted to take advantage of that movement. I wanted to get yes. kind of a rotational aspect. So I wanted the squares on the inside to go in a different direction from the squares on the outside. And to do that, you need to plan ahead a little yes. bit or be conscious of how you're stitching and cutting a directional fabric in order to get that, that movement around the quilt, if that matters to you. So this will apply to any directional fabric, whether it's fabric that you create or fabric that you buy. So as I said, the general method is you have your two squares, 
Um, with the stripe, it's very clear what's the right side and the wrong side. With the, the solids, not so much. Um, the side that I didn't starch, I consider the right side okay. for the solids, but that's just okay. me. So what you'd normally do is you would just place these right sides together, you draw your line, you stitch on either side, you cut them open, and you're done. But with a directional fabric, as I said, you want to be aware of that because these are two half square triangle units that I made that came from the same, you know, from a set that like that. Mm -hmm. And these, these stripes are always going to go in the same direction. So if we look at the upper left hand corner of the quilt, the half square triangle block that's in the upper left hand corner is oriented like this, this one right here, with the solid triangle in the upper right hand side and then the stripes going vertically. Right. And all of those blocks in the outer ring can be made like that. However, if you look at the inner square, the stripes are actually going a different direction because if I lay this down, kitty corner to it, to emulate that placement there, yeah. you'll see my stripes are still going vertically. Yes. They're not going horizontally as they are in the quilt. Right. So with that, you just want to be sure that when you, it comes time to stitch and place your your stripes, you want to make half going one direction and half going the other. And just looking at it, it may not make sense why that's going to make a difference, but it does. So I've already um, drawn my line, as you can see in blue, and I already stitched on either side. You can see, even though we're looking at the wrong side of the fabric, I think you can see how the stripes are going vertically um, in both ways. So let's just cut these apart and see how that makes a difference. So you had your stripes going all in the same direction, but your diagonal line of stitching went in opposite directions. Correct. So the one that I just cut, if we're working with the stripes going vertically, just as a matter of, for consistencies, um, this line I drew from lower left to upper right, and the one next to it I drew from upper left to lower right. Again, it, it may not seem like it should make a difference, but it does. It absolutely does. And, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm sure I'm the only person who talks to herself when she is all alone sewing. And but, <laughs> but I really was, I mean, I was laying things out and I was talking to myself saying, okay, I've got this many squares going, this, 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 this you know, and yes. if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. So let's just press these open briefly, quickly. Doesn't matter which direction. I'm pressing my seam allowance. Um, the other thing I will say is I knew what size I needed these to be finished, and I did cut my, squ my squares a full inch larger for seam allowances rather than the generally accepted 7 eighths of an inch, thinking that I would trim them. I didn't really need but to trim them. But it was them. flannel. Anyway. It was flannel, and flannel just does not behave like quilting weight cotton. And again, especially working with receiving blankets that aren't even necessarily manufactured to be worked with. Right. You know, when you're buying flannel, especially good quality flannel, they are, they have you the sewer in mind and right. they are using a nice thread count and a nice finish, but it's not the case with receiving blankets, but that's no reason not to use them. It's, sure. there are just certain things to be aware of. Right. So, so let's play, shall we? Do, do, do. And here we go. So now I've got the placement, those two kitty corner blocks in the right. upper left hand corner. Now I have that oppositional the relation we go. going the direction you want. Mm -hmm. So that's just something you can apply to any time you're using directional right. half square triangle units. You can right. play with that and get different movement going in your quilt. The other thing um, I learned while I was making this was um, again the just the variables of working with flannel and um, I had leftovers from when I made my my blocks out of the right. strip pieced units so then I um, had to cut more strips two and a half inches wide across the, the strips um, I had to do some unpicking and re-sewing to get the order and to get as many in a row as I wanted because these outer pieced border borders are 36 inches. So I had some, some sewing to do there to get what I wanted. But in doing all of that, they sort of shrank a little bit. Now I knew mathematically they hadn't because I'd been very, very careful. But again, working with flannel, it kind of will maybe kind of seizes up on you a little right. bit. And, 
Um, so I added the outer one inch solid borders. And what I did was I trusted the math that I did for my outer solid borders and I matched centers and ends. Okay. Pinned and then just eased it in. Um, it, you could say I was easing in the fullness from the solid strips, but what I was really going to be doing was encouraging this piece strip to return to its original intended yes. length. Yes, <laughs> so your piece strip was actually a little short. Yes. The it, way it was, it was working. Now, the funny thing is, when I went to go make my sample strip, it ended up being just right. <laughs> Figures. Different fabrics, as yeah. you can see, and I made it, because I, I don't have any of that left, I used everything up for that. Um, but maybe I just starched more heavily. Right. So again, use your solid strips, make sure that they're cut accurately, and then you use those as your guide to make right. sure that your, your, the um, outer borders of your quilt are gonna lie as flat as possible. Now again, this is a quilt that hopefully is going to get a lot of use. Right. So it doesn't, it's not a show quilt, but you still want that stability. Right. And you don't want so much waviness going on, especially when it comes time to do the quilting. So now let's talk about Yes, let's that. talk about the quilting. I like the fact that you did some machine quilting and some hand quilting. I do too. <laughs> because um, the, one of the things I like about this quilt is you don't spend too long on any one step to really get bored with it. Right. The piecing goes pretty quickly. Um, the machine quilting goes pretty quickly. Yes. And then the hand quilting, if you want to do any, can also go relatively quickly. For hand quilting. <laughs> For hand quilting. It's all relative though. Yes. Um, I did do mostly mach uh, machine quilting. Um, as you can see, I quilted lines in the, um, in the half square triangle blocks um, to kind of play up that sense of movement. Right. But I knew I wanted to play with those larger panels and, and put something a little more organic in there. Right. And I am not as good a free motion quilter as some are. Um, but I do enjoy the hand quilting. So I decided to add some big stitch hand quilted duck motifs. And I found the duck motifs in um, a quilt maker book of quilting motifs. There are a number of volumes available. I have one of them at home and um, luckily it just happens to be one with a lot of juvenile motifs and they're adorable and it was just the right size. Right. Fantastic, fantastic resource. So I actually traced the body separate from the wing onto template plastic. Okay. And then I traced around them with my water soluble pen so that I could get the, I didn't feel like making a stencil out of pounds and right. so I just used template plastic. Um, but I just want to talk really quickly about big stitch hand quilting because um, it's gaining in popularity. Yes, it is. But I think some definitions are being left out of that and people are curious like, what does that mean? Does it just mean I use regular quilting you know, hand quilting thread um, and just make my stitches longer? Not really. Um, most people are going to tell you that it's, it's big stitch hand quilting is defined mostly by the thread that you use. And so for this quilt, I used mostly pearl cotton size eight. There are a few different manufacturers for it. Um, and it's thicker than hand quilting thread. Right. It is, um, well, I guess, wound or something. So it doesn't have separate strands like right. you'd find with embroidery floss. Right. So um, your thread is going to necessitate a bigger needle. So really what dis defines big stitch hand quilting is the size of your thread and your expectations. Okay. okay. So I like to think about the difference between fine hand quilting or you know heirloom hand quilting and big stitch as the difference between say haute cuisine and rustic down home cooking. Okay. Not One is not better than the either, other. It's what are you in the mood for tonight? Yes. <laughs> are you in Different. the mood for white linen service? Or are you in the mood for, you know, just something rustic and filling and hearty? Yes. Um, that's the difference. So um, there are a variety of needles available. Um, I always recommend playing around. And this, this sampler packet is a great way to try out a different uh, variety of different needles in one packet, or you can just buy some. They're not that expensive. You can play around. The sh I like the chenilles. Those are my favorite, that okay. size. Um, so I'll just show it really quickly. I put a quilter's knot in the end of my thread here. And this is, as you can see, this was my quilt sandwich that I tested my machine tension okay, on yes. before I started machine quilting this. So I'll use it just to show really quickly how we do the big stitch. Um, just as you do with any hand quilting 
um, stitch, you start, you don't go all the way through the backing, you're just bringing the needle um, up where you want to start, you move, you move it through the batting, but not the backing, and then you just, you still should be able to just pop it through, let that pop through super easy. And then you just take your stitches, I usually load maybe two stitches per needle, I usually do use a thimble. I don't have one here with me today, but um, you can use one. Or I can just use my, my needle, my nail, excuse me, my fingernail. And my stitches are maybe an eighth of an inch long. Okay. Uniformity is what matters the most. Um, you know, I talked about how it's relatively quick. I would say each of those ducks took me 20, 25 minutes a piece. Okay. There are 12 of them. That's five to six hours of hand quilting. Yeah. So it's not fast, but, but the nice thing was that I could do it wherever my girls were playing that day. I didn't have to just be at my machine. Oh, we're in the living room now? Okay, I can come into the living room. Oh, we're in the bedroom now? So that was nice. Um, but like I said, no, no one step of this quilt is gonna take you so long that you're gonna get really sick right. of it. Right. And that's really it. Oh, about starch. Yes. Because <gasps> I was just thinking, what's the last thing on the quilt? It's the backing. I did not starch my backing fabric. And it's flannel also. It's also, I used, I, I did a piece backing um, and I used the, the rest of the fabric that I had used on okay. the top. I tried to use it all up as much as possible. And I got myself a great big pucker. Because oh. you didn't start. Because I didn't the start. back moved as you were stitching. So I went, I actually did rip it out because I thought, oh, well this would drive Lori crazy. Can I live with it? <laughs> No, I cannot live with this. So I did rip out my, my quilting and I tried to ease it in as best I could, but it's still evident, it's still okay. there. So starch, definitely starch. Even for the back. Even okay. for the back, even for the back. And that is basically it. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything that you learned cool. with your working with flannel receiving blankets. My pleasure, I really enjoyed it. I, I love this little quilt. It's, it's super wonderful. warm and comfortable and um, I have some fond memories attached to some of the receiving yes. blankets, the fabrics that are in there, yeah. so it has a, some meaning. Although I don't know if we're going to keep it because we don't really need it anymore. So I'm gonna to try to find somebody with a small child who can use it. Perfect, so, Yeah. perfect. Well, thank you again. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us. We're so glad you came. Come see us again next time. And until then, happy quilting. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.